This is Viral News with your host, the Madman Mike on the Mic. The state of Missouri has executed a man whom prosecutors had come to believe was innocent. The U.S. Supreme Court rejected last-minute requests to stay the execution, even though the prosecutor's office had filed a motion to vacate the man's conviction. St. Louis Public Radio's Rachel Lippin has followed the case. Marcellus Williams was convicted of the 1998 murder of a former newspaper reporter. There was never any forensic evidence, things like DNA, fingerprints, or hair that connected him to the scene. Police were able to find some belongings of the victim in Williams' car, and he pawned a laptop that belonged to her husband. The conviction was based largely on the testimony of a former girlfriend and a jailhouse informant. Rachel Lippin reporting. Testing on the knife used as the murder weapon revealed the DNA on it likely belonged to two former employees of the prosecutor's office who handled it, not Williams. The American company Cox Media Group has privately admitted to developing an active listening piece of software to eavesdrop on users' conversations and then better target consumers. To tell us a bit about it, our science and tech editor, Julia Seeger, is with me now. And Julia, I suppose this is proof, really, isn't it, that advertisers really are listening to us? That's right. Uh, We've all experienced this situation, I think, where you're talking about something next to a phone. And then minutes later, even seconds later, you scroll on an app or you navigate online and you find this advertising that's specifically linked to what you were just talking about. So we all know that it actually happens, right? And it's even become a joke. New video released by the NYPD showing the controversial moment. Officers opened fire on a man at a New York City subway station. Shot fired, shot fired. Hitting two bystanders, critically injuring at least one of them. Authorities say 37-year-old Daryl Mickles jumped a turnstile in Brooklyn while wielding an 8-inch knife. Police confront him. Don't touch it. Put it down. 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 Then it escalates. No. Take the taser, taser. Police say Mickles is then seen lunging at an officer. Moments later, shots fired, striking Mickles, but also hitting one of the responding officers. I'm shot, I'm shot! And two bystanders, including Gregory Del Pest, shot in the head, now in critical condition. His family questioning the police response. There's no reason why any bullets should have been flying in that subway station at any point. The officers did not de-escalate that appropriately. And he was shot in the back of the head, and now he's fighting for his life. What if instead of spending $151 million on overtime policing alone on the subways, we paid for 95,000 low-income New Yorkers to access public transport? New York City police officers shot a man attempting to jump the turnstile on a subway on September 15th, as well as two bystanders and another cop. One bystander, Gregory Del Pesh, is in critical condition. The incident has sparked outrage, with many pointing to it as an example of excessive force and calling into question why fare evasion is so over-policed. Data shows the city of New York spent around 100 150 million dollars last year policing fare evaders. Even if they were to have caught every single person, the total owed back would barely be $100,000. The town of Springfield is stumping up security as viral unfounded claims about Haitian immigrants stealing and eating pets continue to circulate, amplified by former President Trump and running mate Ohio Senator J.D. Vance. J.D. Vance, in an interview with CNN's Dana Bash, doubled down on the false claim, but provided no evidence for it. Then Vance said this. If I have to create stories so that the American media actually pays attention to the suffering of the American people, then that's what I'm going to do. Take me to your lizard. It comes from a very ancient democracy, you see. What? A world of lizards? No, nothing anything like so straightforward. On its world, the people are people. The leaders are lizards. The people hate the lizards, and the lizards rule the people. They use brainwashing, reality TV, lifestyle magazines, the usual stuff. If it's a democracy, why don't the people get rid of the lizards? It honestly doesn't occur to them. They've all got the vote, so they all pretty much assume that the government they voted in more or less approximates to the government they want, so they go back to watching TV. You mean they actually vote for the lizards? Oh, yes, of course. But why? Because if they didn't vote for a lizard, the wrong lizard might get in. The kind of politics we have now 
where the left is represented by this kind of Obama, Macron style centrism, where you're both for the market and for bureaucracy at the same time. You know, it's kind of horrible, right? The only possible appeal of that kind of politics is, well, at least they're not Nazis, right? So, so what they want is the left to be this kind of mishmash of bureaucratic market centrism and the right to be outright fascist. To set the ball rolling in an actual left direction will make that centrism look like utterly unappealing. In France, sometimes they talk about the extreme center, and I think that's a fitting phrase. It strikes me that what's called the moderates are the most immoderate people possible. And the reason why they're so uncompromising, I think, is because they realize they don't have a lot of positive arguments. They're not really for anything. I mean, somebody like Obama, the reason he worked was because he looked like the kind of guy who would have a vision. He acted like a visionary, he had the intonation, he had the way of standing and looking into the distance like he really believed in something. And it shows you something about just how much visionary politics has been killed. It didn't even seem to occur to people to ask what his vision actually was, right? Because it turns out, insofar as he had a vision, his vision was not to have a vision. You know, he believed in pragmatism and compromise and so forth. And that's what the, the center has been reduced to. It's become this pure set of performative symbols. And at the same time, you get to feel morally superior, which is ultimately what centrism, what liberal centrism is all about, is the ability to feel, feel better than other people. So there is a kind of a symbiosis whereby the right wing pretend to be stupid, like George Bush II sort of perfected this, like I'll act like a yokel, all of the liberals will make fun of me as an idiot, everybody who resents the sort of cultural elite for having monopolized all the good jobs will look at them sneering at me and say, yeah, I bet those guys feel the same way about me as they feel about Bush, I'll vote for Bush, ha ha ha, stick it to them, right? You know, that shtick, Trump is just doing it in a more extreme version of the same thing, Johnson's doing the same thing. You know, you act like an idiot, the people who are um, the sort of educated elite make fun of you and it works. Now who's really the idiot, right? People keep falling for the same stupid trick over and over and over again. So there's a symbiotic relationship between these centrists who are just sort of sneering elitists and these guys who are the scam artists who pretend to be yokels, who pretend to be idiots, or pretend to be fascists. They're not even real fascists. They're kind of phony fascists. They are trying to set up a situation where those are the only two viable political choices because they both feed off and complement one another. The major problem, one of the major problems, for there are several, one of the many major problems with governing people is that of who you get to do it or rather of who manages to get people to let them do it to them. To summarize, it is a well-known and much lamented fact that those people who most want to rule people are, ipso facto, those least suited to do it. To summarize the summary, anyone who is capable of getting themselves made president should on no account be allowed to do the job. If I have to create stories so that the American media actually pays attention to the suffering of the American people, then that's what I'm going to do. They say these are very uh, exciting times. They are. Some people say they're scary times. I disagree. I think these are very exciting times. When they're changing all the rules, we can do anything we want now. I say, let's kidnap some billionaires. <laughs> Why not? We got a lot of problems. Five guys have all the money. Let's go get them. <laughs> Who's going to stop us? Look, I'm all for you being a billionaire. Good job. Good job. You worked hard. You changed the world. And you're going to be a billionaire. You get to be a billionaire for 24 hours. You don't start giving that money away to poor people by morning. We're coming to get you.